Hey guys, Samsonite Bricks. Uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're doing our Throwback Thursday video for this week, and we're going to look at a set from 2008. And to prepare for this, I have to get rid of Benny and place another iconic figure that's near and dear to me up there. So here we have the Steven Spielberg minifigure from the Studios line way back from like 1999 to 2003. Now this doesn't have anything to do with the set we're reviewing today. But I wanted to bring him out because he directed the movie that this set is based off of. So it's time for a bit of a story. The reason why I'm looking at this set is because it's one of two sets I have based off this movie that changed my life when I saw it for the first time about 11 years ago this week, which is why I thought it was a good time to talk about it. So today we're going to be talking about set number 7621, Indiana Jones and the Lost Tomb. And there it is, guys, in all its 2008 LEGO glory. This set retailed for $20 back in 2008, and it contains 277 pieces. This set uh, comes with two minifigures, Indiana Jones, of course, and Marion Ravenwood. It also has a skeleton, which is part of a play feature, so we'll look at that later. And of course, it has one of the greatest MacGuffins in film history. The Ark of the Covenant. So now we're going to take an up close look at those minifigures. So first of all, we're going to look at Indiana Jones himself. I mean, obviously. And just look at that. It's so simple in the printing for 2008. There's no back printing. There's no double-sided head. Of course, they couldn't do that with the hat. But just look at how... Like, just looking at this figure makes me nostalgic for that time period. And he's got the bullwhip, which was a new piece at that time. And he's got the bag, which was, I believe the satchel was a new piece for 2008 as well. And the hat might have been as well. And, and just that face perfectly conveys the stubble that Harrison Ford uh, used in Raiders of the Lost Ark. So taking off all the accessories, we can see the torso a bit better. Unfortunately, my lighting setup isn't perfect yet, so I'm pretty sure no one can make out the pockets that are printed on there or the details that are printed on the jacket, and I apologize for that. As I keep making my videos, I hope to get better at the lighting situation, but right now I just don't have the ability to have better lighting, and I apologize for that. But we can also see the holster on the tor on the uh, leg pieces there uh, with the belt that runs across, and like I said before, there's no back printing at all, but this is still... Such an iconic Lego minifigure. And he's probably... Well, he's not the most famous Lego adventurer. We have Johnny Thunder. We have all the other adventurers crew. We have this absolute legend right here. Clutch Powers. Come on, guys. We all know that Clutch Powers really is the best Lego character ever designed, right? No denying that, right? I mean, it's Clutch Powers. What else can you say? So here we have Marion Ravenwood um, in the nightgown that she was wearing in this scene. And there's no printing on the legs. There is some pretty good for 2008 printing on the torso. Uh, again, I don't think there's any printing on the back. No. Um, I'm pretty sure this hairpiece was new back in 2008. We've seen it a few times now. Not as much as I thought. Like, it's become a very rare hairpiece. I think it was used in a Thor Ragnarok set last year, or two years ago, and it might have been used, I think it was used in the Big Bang Theory set amongst other uh, smaller scale releases. Um, but she does have a double-sided face, which definitely fits Marion's attitude in this sequence. So here we have the hidden temple that uh, is in the Well of the Souls in Tanis, I think it was, uh, as seen in the 1981 film Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, it's a pretty faithful recreation, uh, in a small scale, like of the scene, because the scene is definitely, a, it's a much bigger location in the movie, but of course, they already had a big uh, temple set in this initial wave. So we have a couple statues there, um, representing, I think they represent an Egyptian god, I can't really remember my Egypt history, but there was a pretty interesting play feature here, which again replicates a scene from the movie, where... After they get stuck down in the tomb, uh, Indy scales the thing, and then, like, kind of 
pushes at it to get it, because uh, it was weak, to send it down and into the wall. And you can replicate that by pulling... Oh, the oh, piece fell off. Anyway, by pulling this red pin down here, you could pull this, and if he's not on top of it, the entire statue will fall down and burst out the back wall. You know, this set is 11 years old, so the play features might not work as well anymore. But the other side, this is the one that you're actually really supposed to knock over, because it replicates a scene from the movie. So, they're trying to get out of the temple, they knock over the statue, statue goes down, and then Marion stumbles into a whole room full of skeletons, hence why the scared face is there. There's only one skeleton, but it is used to a creepy effect, because the wall collapses and there's, you know, a skeleton hanging in there. You know. Ha ha. One thing of interest here is the stickers used on these tiles, or these giant panels, because they're unique on both. This one has a different statue and symbols than the other one, which is right here. And... You know, that, that fade is natural, part of the sticker. Uh, that's not. That's a sign of the age, the fact that it's peeling. And there's another pretty interesting sticker in here. And it's up top, above the arc. Although there is another sticker behind the arc, and we'll look at that too. Which again, is unique for the set, and different from the other ones. But up top, there's a fun little easter egg there, because it has an Egyptian sitting with R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars. And that's a funny little joke and all, but it's actually inspired by a joke from the movie. And I'll see if I can find a picture to put up here to show how the joke looked in the movie. It It's referencing something from the movie, so that's really cool. Uh, another thing that we got in the set, each there's a torch on each side here, which just uses a flame piece and the standard carrot piece in brown. So that's cool. And there's one more play feature up here that I'll show off in a minute. I just want to show the Ark of the Covenant first. So there it is, the, the famed uh, box that sends Indiana Jones all the way to Egypt to get, reuniting him with Marion and all his German buddies, you know, enemies of course. Um, this is a pretty good scale, I think. I think it's pretty much bang on minifigure scale. Uh, you can't open it, but that's probably a good thing, because you don't want our faces to melt off, so... We're going to leave that closed. So we've got this whole play feature in this set that's inspired by one of the most iconic scenes set in this. And it involves something around the back. I'll just show you the back. Oh, there's another sticker there I forgot to point out. And there's, I think, the same one on the other side. It doesn't look the greatest from behind. Up here, this is the play feature that we want to use. By triggering that play feature, it allows us to make this thing a whole lot more scary. Oh, there we go. Now there's a whole bunch of snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? So here we have the whole set back to basics. Um, so I think I've covered everything. I covered all the play features with the knocking over those and the skeleton and the snakes falling from the sky. And I looked at the figures. But so now we're going to talk about why this set is part of Throwback Thursday. Like I said at the beginning, it's been about 11 years since I saw the movie. Uh, I think I saw, I think I was one of the people that saw it a little too early. I mean, I saw the next, the other three, like, immediately after, and those weren't anywhere near. Because, you know, when you're an indeterminate age, um, and you haven't watched a lot of disturbing things, watching someone's face fall off, or getting impaled by spears in a temple, it's a little, it's a little scarring, depending on the age. But, like, the next time I saw it, I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. So again, like last time, you, this is mostly just made for me to show off an old set that I have. Because, especially this set, you are not going to be able to get this set cheap on the aftermarket. So, I like making these videos just to show people how LEGO's progressed. Of course, I don't have, there's no current Indiana Jones sets to compare these two. Like, say, the Toy Story set from last week where there is going to be a version to compare to, or any number of Star Wars sets I could look at and compare to a current version of. So that's why this is a little bit special, because there is nothing to compare this to. This is a one-of-a-kind set. You know, you know what I mean.
there hasn't been a remake. So, out of that, and with the nostalgia value, this set gets a 10 out of 10. It nails down everything. Figures that the only thing that could have improved this set figure wise is if they had added his digging partner Sala. For years, I was sad that we never got Sala. There were so many figures that we didn't get from Indiana Jones. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll subscribe and leave a positive comment uh, about how I can improve. And if you want me to take a look at another Indiana Jones set someday, uh, I can tell you that I have the little motorcycle set built and ready to review. I have the Ambush and Cairo set built and ready to review. I have the Shanghai Chase from Temple of Doom built and ready to review. And I have the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull Jungle Duel set. Um, which I don't really want to talk about, but I will if someone wants to sit through a rant about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Cut. Cut. All right, Harrison, that was terrible. Uh, I don't even think we can use you in the movie anymore. I'm sorry. You you're fired. What? Yeah, we're going to replace you with a much better up-and-coming action hero. All right, Clutch, let's see how you can do this scene.